Artificial intelligence. Let me tell you something about this industry, a little bit of a secret that they don't want you to know. It's not glamorous. AI developers like myself don't go around creating these crazy robots that can actually take over the world. Instead, we sit in our desks day and night, more so night than day, to be honest. We drink coffee and work with data, or augment data, or manipulate data, or analyze data. The point is we work with data until we're absolutely sick of data. If you've worked in the artificial intelligence or data science industry, you'll know that having enough data for high impact projects is easier said than done. If you've worked in the healthcare industry, this takes it a little bit of a step further. Acquiring important healthcare data isn't just easier said than done. It's one of the most demotivating factors of stepping into this industry with AI. The fact is that patient confidentiality laws are put into place to protect large amounts of patients from data distribution. That doesn't mean that accessing this data is necessarily impossible. However, it makes large volume data collection incredibly difficult. Certain data augmentation techniques are used to increase data volume. Specifically for image data sets, these include rotations, reflections, cropping, etc. However, data augmentation in these methods can only get us so far. It can definitely increase accuracy, but what if there was another way to do this? What if instead of applying functions to these images to change them and add them to our data set, we actually generated new unique images? New images capable of undergoing the same data augmentation. New images that increase our data volume drastically. This might actually be possible through the use of generative adversarial networks. Generative adversarial networks, or GANs for short, allow for the generation of images. On a surface level, this seems to have pretty limited applications. Some of the primary applications include the generation of faces or art. A popular website you may have heard of, known as thispersondoesnotexist.com, runs entirely on GANs. However, other major applications might potentially exist that utilize the generative adversarial networks, namely synthetic medical data generation. Before getting into that, you might be asking, how do GANs actually work? GANs utilize neural networks in a way that differs from other AI models. Rather than using a single type of neural network, this model uses two networks that train simultaneously off of each other and improve together. These networks consist of a generator network and a discriminator network. The generator network begins by generating random noise. It doesn't necessarily resemble anything, just random pixels. The discriminator network's job is to identify whether the generated image is real or fake. For example, the discriminator might train off of a data set of images and identify certain features. This can be done through a convolutional neural network, or CNN for short. If you don't know what that is, check out my video on them in the description. If the discriminator thinks that the generated image has the same features and is in fact real, the output will be one. However, if the discriminator doesn't believe the generated image is real, the output will be zero. That being said, the output isn't an integer value, meaning it's a probability value between zero and one. The goal of a GAN is to have these individual networks train off of each other and improve. Think of it this way. Suppose we were to have a forger forging a painting. This would be our generator. We also have a detective that compares real paintings with the paintings of the forger to see if these paintings are real or fake. As the detective gets better and better at telling the difference between real and fake paintings, the forger needs to get better and better at forging paintings to adapt. The goal is to trick the detective into thinking that the fake paintings created by the forger are actually real. If the detective is really good at distinguishing between fakes and reals, but he still falls for the paintings created by the forger, that means that the forged paintings must look almost identical to the originals. In this case, we've done our job. In our GAN, our input is a dataset of chest x-rays. Our discriminator begins by learning the features of our chest x-rays slowly to improve its ability to classify between chest x-rays and non-chest x-rays. We then use a generator which begins off by creating noise. As our GAN starts training, our generator is unable to get nearly close enough to tricking our discriminator. This means that certain weights of the generator network are updated to get closer and closer to tricking the discriminator, which means the discriminator function gets closer and closer to the value 1. 
This process repeats itself with our generator and discriminator network training interns. After about an hour of training, we're able to achieve somewhat decent results. Obviously, these chest x-rays don't look super amazing. However, the general idea can be seen in them despite only one hour of training. We've identified that we're able to create new pieces of medical data using old medical images. However, is this really applicable in the real world? The answer isn't so straightforward. Various studies show that models using GAN-produced images concatenated with the original dataset hold somewhat higher accuracies. That being said, these images aren't entirely unique. The individual chest x-ray images generated don't actually exist. However, certain features of all the training images are extracted and used during generation, and this goes back to the way that GANs work on a fundamental level. This means that potential data biases can prevent future models from undergoing significant increases in accuracy. That being said, it's still an area of further research. As GANs get better and better, the future of synthetic medical data creation becomes closer and closer to a reality, opening the world up to an AI-aided healthcare system free of human error.